In this video, we're gonna recover data from a USB stick that is not detecting. Let's take a look. The first thing I like to do, if a USB doesn't respond in a PC, is check the health of the electronics. So a basic little amp meter that runs in series with the USB port, I can plug this in and see what's happening. And the first thing we see here is 5 volts is going to the USB stick, but we're seeing 0 amps. So that means there's no current flowing into this USB stick, and that's an open circuit. So that's why it's not detecting. There's a definite problem with this USB stick, and we need to open it up to find out what's wrong. Okay, I'll get my little tool, and I like to find a little gap in here. There you go. And lift that open. Be careful not to probe or damage any electronics inside when you open them up and just be very careful getting them out. There we go. So on the left here, the large one, that's the memory chip. That's where all the data is stored. And this one, this little one here is the controller chip. Its job is to communicate with the computer and store the data here. One thing I notice with it is it's a little bit bent, so it's possible the user has bent it and damaged it, but all the little um, pins and connectors look all right. So let's have a look on the microscope. So under microscope, everything looks okay. It definitely looks bent. Uh, a couple of things we're looking for is any broken connectors. That's common with USB sticks, people will bump them and break them. So uh, we'll check, have a look at these four pins and you can see that they're soldered correctly. That looks all good. Okay, here's a quick setup of God. I'm running five volts from my power supply into my little meter here so I can probe it. Okay, with our multimeter, we're gonna follow it, the pin out from the USB connector itself. So this large pin here is our five volts uh, this one here is our data, our negative data line. This is our positive data line, and this is our 5 volts negative here on this side. So first thing I'm going to do is follow where it comes into the PCB. And we're getting 5 volts, or 4.9 that you can just see on the screen there, but I'm happy with that. So we've got our 5 volts coming in, we follow it around to here. Then we come to this other side of this resistor, we've got five volts. And then it looks like it disappears to the other side. So we're gonna to have to flip it and look. Okay, with the USB stick flipped over on the other side, we can see the main little controller chip. And uh, that's a QFP, a quad flat package chip, and it's 48 pin, it's got 12 on each side. And this one's made by Silicon Motion. They're a Taiwanese electronics company. So we followed the power on this side, but we've flipped it. So it'll be mirrored on this side. So we're going to have a look for the 5 volts, and we're going to touch up here where, where it came through the other side. And we do have 5 volts there. That's good. And it does flow into this main pin here. So we'll check this main pin. And we've got 5 volts going in. We've also got a little 4.7 microfarad decoupling capacitor there. That's to filter noise on the 5 volt input. And what I know with these little silicon motion chips from this era, the ground um, pin is this one adjacent. So I'll just check that with continuity mode. We should touch it and get a beep to ground because we need to have the 5 volts coming out as well. Okay, so the ground pin there is working good. We don't have a short to ground. We've still got an open circuit. So 5 volts is coming in and 5 volts can get back out. We still don't know what's causing this CPU not to fire up. Thought I'd show you something else, guys. This last pin down the end here is... Um, GPIO number three. It's a general purpose input output pin, which the vendor has used to program blinking the LED. So that's pretty cool. Now, 
I wasn't happy with the connection with the voltage in pin, so I've just reflowed the solder on it so it looks a bit bulky and I'm gonna power it back up and test it, see what's happened. Okay, so let's turn this back on, see what happens. Um, we're getting voltage in. Oh, you can't really see my screen. There we go. So it's actually now drawing current and the LED is flashing. I might plug it in the PC and have a look and see if it's detecting. The 5 volt line's a bit low, isn't it? Alright, let's have a look on the computer. Okay, so I've plugged it back in and that LED is slowly flashing and it's still not detecting. So I think that's an error state. I think this LED is trying to tell me something and uh, maybe only the vendor knows what that means. So I'm going to reflow the main controller chip here, resolder it and see if there's other pins that aren't soldered. Maybe the um, solder joints have gotten a bit dry and cracked, so I'm going to reflow all the solder points. Okay, let's get in there with a bit of flux. We'll do all the pins. I'm just going to melt the solder and let it re-solidify and see if there's any joints that are a little bit dry and cracked. Okay, looks pretty good. We're going to let it cool down a little bit before we plug it back in and try it. That's cooled down. It's time to plug it in. It goes this way. And let's have a look. LED looks better. It's not doing that slow red flashing That's good news. Let's have a look in Windows. Okay, guys, so the good news is it is saving data. If you're new to the channel, welcome along. I upload regular data recovery videos, and I'll see you guys next time.